Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation from Polish Math Olympiads. Now we have a cubed equals 6b squared plus 2 and a and b are integers. Okay, let's see how we can solve this problem. Diophantine equations are actually pretty interesting. I also made a video on them. You can go ahead and check it out. They're basically equations with integer solutions, sometimes rational, and there's usually uh, more variables than equations. So in this case, we have two variables and a single equation, and we're going to be able to solve it as long as a and b are integers. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. So a cubed, notice that a cubed is equal to 6b squared plus 2. So a cubed is an even number, right? a cubed is an even integer. Why? Because 6 is even, 2 is even. The sum of two even numbers is also even. Since a is even, or since a cubed is even, that means a is even. And since a is even, we can write a as 2 times another integer. Let's call that integer c. Because we already used a and b, let's set a equal to 2c. 2c or not 2c, hopefully you see what I see. Now when you do the replacement, you're going to cube 2c, that's going to give you 8c cubed equals 6b squared plus 2. You can divide both sides by 2. That's what's cool about these equations. 4c cubed equals 3b squared plus 1. Awesome. Now, at this point, notice that 4c is even or 4c cubed is even. And 1 is odd, 3b squared is odd. B is probably odd from here, right? Does that make sense? Okay. Because if b is even then 3 times b squared is going to be even, even plus 1 is going to be odd, but there's no way 4c cubed can be odd. So this basically implies, hopefully that made sense, that b is odd. Okay? Now we're going to look at this, obviously you could also verify that by looking at it mod 2. Mod 2, 3b squared plus 1 would be 0, and from there you could conclude the same thing. But let's go ahead and look at this from a mod 3 perspective. If you divide everything by 3 and focus on the remainders, from the left-hand side, you're going to get c cubed because 4 is 1 mod 3. And then 3b squared is going to be 0. And c cubed is going to be 1 mod 3, which implies that c is 1 mod 3. Does that make sense? Now, why is that happening? Because if c is 0 mod 3, its, it's cube is going to be 0. If c is 2 mod 3, then its cube is going to be 2 mod 3. So mod 3 basically, or cubing doesn't change uh, any result mod 3. And there's a good reason behind it, but let's not get into that right now. So b is odd and c is 1 mod 3. Let's go ahead and write b as 2d plus 1. Remember, a was even and we wrote it as 2c. Now we're doing the same thing pretty much for b, but b is odd. So we can write it as 2d plus 1, where d is just another integer. Okay? Now, if b is given as follows, and what do we know? We do know that 4c cubed is equal to 3b squared plus 1. From here, remember, we simplified it. And now we're going to go ahead and replace b with 2d plus 1. We're going to square it, multiply by 3, and add 1. And let's see what we get from there. This is going to be 4d squared plus 4d plus 1. Multiply everything by 3, you're going to get 12d squared plus 12d plus 3 plus 1, which is plus 4. Great. Notice that everything is divisible by 4, so we can go ahead and simplify this expression. Let's go ahead and simplify it. c cubed equals 3d squared plus 3d plus 1. Now, I hope this expression makes sense to you because, remember, in previous videos, we talked about this. Anytime you see a cube and some variable squared plus the same variable, then you have to think about a perfect cube. And this is what's happening. Let's go ahead and add d cubed to both sides and see what happens. Something miraculous is going to happen. Add d cubed and then add d cubed. And then you're going to get c cubed plus d cubed, which is sum of two cubes on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, you're going to get another perfect cube. And this is just perfect. You know why? Because this is connected to Fermat's last theorem, which could only be proven in 1980s, which took several hundreds of years 
to prove by greatest mathematicians. Finally, Andrew Wiles proved it, and I believe the proof is about 90 pages, and it uses a lot of complicated uh, mathematics. Anyways, elliptic curves and all that stuff, Taniyama Shimura conjecture, and all that crazy stuff. Anyways, this is the equation. So what does Fermat's last theorem say about third powers? It just says that if you have uh, basic, let's go ahead and express it using x, y, z. So it just says that x cubed plus y cubed equals z cubed. As you know, the Pythagorean theorem works with second powers nicely. But Fermat said you can't do the same thing with third powers and anything higher than uh, power of 2 in general. Except for trivial solutions, of course. Obviously, x can be 1, y can be 0, and z can be 1, right? Those are going to work. But other than that, we don't have any non-trivial solutions. Isn't that great? So that's going to help us solve this Olympiad problem. Let's go ahead and take a look. So we have sum of two cubes equal another cube, which is only possible if c or d is equal to 0. Okay, great. That's a great conclusion from here. C is 0 or D is 0. Make sense? Or there's a third case, D plus 1 is 0. Of course, if D plus 1 is 0, then you're going to have uh, two numbers uh, whose sum is 0. They could be like 1 and negative 1 or 0 and 0. You see, those are all the trivial cases that are not very interesting. Let's take a look. If C is equal to 0, what happens? We're going to be looking at each case, right? If c is equal to 0, then we get d cubed equals d plus 1 cubed. And then from here we get, because by cubing both sides, remember c and d are real numbers, d equals d plus 1. Uh-oh, that's not going to work, right? That's impossible. So c equals 0 did not work. How about d equals 0? Okay, hopefully that works. If d is equal to 0, then we get d plus 1 is equal to 1, because if you just plug in 0 to the equation, right? You're going to get uh, d plus 1 equals 1. And from here, we get d equals 0, right? And let's see. From here, we get c cubed equals 1 and c equals 1. Now, if c is equal to 1 and d is equal to 0, let's go back to the original equation. c is 1, d is 0, d is 0. This is going to work. Notice that it works, right? Okay, great. But c equals 1 means what? Let's go back to where c, where c was and find out what that means in terms of a and b, right? Well, if c is equal to 1, let's go ahead and find out. From here, d is going to be 0. If d is 0, b is 1. And if b is 1, a is going to be 2 because if c is 1, then a is 2. Does that make sense? Okay, let me copy these down here a is equal to 2c, and b is equal to 2d plus 1. Now we have that c is equal to 1, and d is equal to 0. So from here, a is just going to be 2c, which is 2, and b is going to be 2d plus 1, which is 1. So obviously, 2 comma 1 is an ordered pair that works, right? Now let's consider another case. Remember, we had this equation now, d plus 1 can also be 0, right? Which means d is equal to negative 1. So what happens? If d plus 1 is 0, which implies that d is negative 1, from here we get c equals 1. And if c is equal to 1, again, a is going to be 2. But in this case, because d is negative, b is going to be negative 1. So we're going to get another ordered pair, 2 comma negative 1. Make sense? We got 2 comma 1, and now we have 2 comma negative 1. So those are going to be pretty much the solutions. A comma B can be 2 comma 1 or 2 comma negative 1. And you can definitely go ahead and plug these into the equations. For example, if you go ahead and substitute, like expand B plus 1 cubed, and you're going to get that, and then 1 minus B cubed, and if you add them up, you're going to get 2 6B squared plus 2, which is equal to a cubed. Okay? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.